we had a guest stay over Christmas and um, she, she uh, like when she was there, she's like, Hey, do you have a mixer here? I can't seem to find it in here. We were hoping to make some cookies. And I'm like, that was the one thing we didn't have, you know, <laughs> we yeah. had everything else. Yeah. I'm like, okay. So I went on and DoorDash and ordered one and have it delivered there in, in an hour. You know what I mean? And she was yeah. just raving about that. But I think that you want somebody that's going to do those types of things that yes. you would do for your guests. Hi, I'm Wyatt. And I'm Grace. And you're listening to Our Dad and your host of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Vodacy Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Sean Moore, and we are coming back to you with another awesome interview conversation that we're having with a, a successful short-term rental owner. Nate Morris is joining us today. He's part of our Vodacy Empire Club. And so, Nate, thank you so much for joining us and uh, talking about your journey into short-term rental investing. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's definitely, it's been an, an awesome journey. So I'm excited to share kind of our little piece of it. <laughs> awesome. I love it. And, uh, and and Nate's wife, Jen, is not joining us today, but she's been a part of this journey as well. And so we're going to dive in. And Nate, what I always like to do right in the beginning is kind of is kind of rewind the clock and talk about, you know, what do you do for a living? What pays the bills? How much real estate investing experience do you have? And then, and kind of talk us through that decision to dive into the short-term rental game and kind of what got you interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, so I don't really have much real estate experience other than purchasing and selling my own home. You know, we've owned, we're on our third house that we've owned, you know, bought and sold and moved in different places, but I have kind of a, an interesting background story career-wise. I, I used to be a graphic designer. I, I owned a graphic and website development business that I ran for many years. Um, but I, um, over the past, that was kind of something I did for income. And then over the past 15 years, I've been a pastor of a church. And so slowly transitioned out of that and transitioned into what I do full-time right now, which is, uh, just in the ministry, um, pastoring a church right now. So really had no real estate experience other than, you know, we bought and sold a couple of houses. I bought one in, uh, 2006, I think it was. Uh, right before the whole bubble burst and we sold it a month before everything went crazy, <laughs> yeah. which was great that we got out of it before it, the bottom fell out. And then, uh, you know, moved to uh, Vail. I live in the Vail area. So we were kind of up here. We've bought a couple of houses since then. But other than that, really no real estate investment at all. So Awesome. Yeah. Great. Uh, interesting journey. So you got, you're in kind of a resort, not kind of, you're in a resort town in the mountains in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And so kind of surrounded by the, you know, the resort aspect of, you know, second homes and, and that's where you reside. So what really got you interested in thinking about this as an investment platform and investment vehicle for you guys? Yeah. You know, um, being a pastor, I mean, I, I'm, I'm on kind of a fixed income it, and it's, I get paid fairly, don't get me wrong, but it's, um, there's never opportunity for growth beyond right. what I know I'm going to get. Um, and, and so I've been thinking for years about, okay, how do we kind of utilize our resources to one, grow a retirement that's going to be, you know, a little bit better than I can do just with what I'm making. And then also, um, kind of just building that kind of, uh, just investment portfolio. And so I, I thought about long-term rentals for a long time. I actually had been thinking about that. Uh, how could I get into that? What would that look like? And um, kind of just left it on the back burner. I didn't really love the idea of long term rentals all that much. They're just too, there's not really any personal investment in the property. You know what I mean? And people yeah. trashing it, whatever. Um, so over time, I kind of just uh, sat with that. And then in 2021, when our house, we live in a resort area, our house literally doubled in value from what we purchased it for. <laughs> and so I don't have cash. Uh, I'm not a cash person being in the, the career that I'm in. It's not like I have a ton of resources floating around, but the investment we had made in our home literally doubled. And so I had about, um, I had a, a good amount of equity to play with. And so I thought, okay, this, this is a good moment. The rates were still low. The, the market was hot. Um, what can I do to kind of take some of the equity I've got in our house and maybe do an investment? So I started looking into long-term investments again. And then actually I came across, I think your Facebook ad on Facebook um, and kind of dug into that a little bit, started thinking about short-term rentals. I've got a couple of people that I know here that have done short-term rentals before. And so just gave it a little bit of thought, kind of 
um, worked through it a little bit and then um, really got sold on the idea because one, we love to take vacations, you know? (laughs) So having, having something that we can actually use was a lot more um, attractive to me than just the kind of long-term set it and forget it thing. Um, And the, the idea of um, it's it's just better cash flow and profitability. So really kind of took the deep dive into the Vodacy program was how we got really into it. So awesome. Awesome. So I love hearing that. And so a couple of things that I, it's really interesting. And I hope, you know, it, it, that our listeners are taken from this as well as, you know, you didn't have, you know, you're not a business owner and you don't have unlimited funds and your uh, the ability to go, you know, really increase your active income based on the career you're in being a pa- pastor. It's not like you can just go say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go do these certain things and I'm going to make a lot more money there. And so you're saying, okay, I've got, I've got some resources between the equity we have in our house. You know, we can, we've got, you know, some steady income, active income that we can start to <laughs> say, okay, based on the credit worthiness and everything else, we have the ability to go buy this. What, what passive income vehicle do we like? And for me, that's exactly, I like, I, there's nothing wrong with long-term rentals or multifamily properties or all these other passive right. income vehicles. I really like the personal use aspect of it, right? We're Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you guys are get lifestyle buyer slash investor buyer. It's not just all about the numbers. We need the ultimate goal was to create some more income for yourself with some investments. But then we looked and said, okay, maybe there's some vehicles out there that have kind of a dual use where we, we do have some personal use. It does increase the lifestyle, our our lifestyle right now, along with our financial, um, you know, independence and freedom down the line. and, And obviously right now, so that's really interesting. So you decided that short-term rentals were going to be, you know, what you were going to look into. How, when was that? What, how, how long ago was that? Uh, that was probably January of 2022. So just over a year ago, Okay. Um, I'd been thinking about it for a while, but that was really when I kind of pulled the trigger on. Yeah. Right. I think this is where we want to go. Um, just the, the, the thought of the personal use aspect and even with personal use, still being able to generate a return and, and, you know, and yep. I have, I have three kids, um, so one going into high school, one going into middle school and one that's kind of an elementary school still. So it's like, we like to travel and especially being in Vail, it's like, we kind of wanted to get to so you know, we like to go out where it's warm every once in a while in the winter time. Right. So it was like the, just, it was very attractive that, that kind of concept to me. And then when I saw the, your video and kind of dug in a little bit on one of the, uh, one of the calls that you do, like the public calls, it yeah. was just like, yeah, this, this, this makes a lot of sense. This seems like really a good fit for what we're looking for. So. Awesome. Awesome. So we, we take the plunge. We, we dive into, obviously you wanted to kind of, you know, compress that learning curve. And so you joined with our, with our mentorship mastermind group, which was, which was awesome that you can able, you know, you can tap into kind of something you've never done before, which was, which was great. So what did that, what did that look like? How, how fast did that compress the time? Like when were you able to start making those offers and feel comfortable picking up that new property? And, and how did you decide? You mentioned, you know, you live in the mountains, uh, you know, ski resort area, mountains of Colorado and looking for some warm weather. Like we, when we take you through that process of choosing your locations, um, I know we, we traded the, the mountains for the beach, but how did that, uh, yeah. how did that process go uh, for you guys as you started to s- decide on locations? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, so this was at, at the beginning of 2022 and there were hints of interest rate increases and all that stuff. And I was like, well, I would still buy a property today. Don't get me wrong. But at that point, I'm like, I would like to get in before the interest rates go up. (laughs) And I had a really great 3.99 fixed uh, HELOC um, with through my credit union that I knew was going to go up soon. And so I'm like, okay, I I can pull this HELOC out on our primary house. I can know what the payment's going to be for 20 years on it. And I can use that as a down payment on another place. So we, I kind of was in a little bit of a hurry to really get into it. So I, once I dove into the Vodacy program, I pretty much used all my free time (laughs) going through the videos and taking notes and writing all the stuff down and doing the coaching calls and all that stuff. I was just, I was all in as much as I could be outside of my duties at work and at home. You know, it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to really learn this as best as I can, um, which I was super grateful for, but I, we, we got to the point of putting an off, putting offers in late February, early March. So it was like, you know, six, eight weeks was really when we kind of really dug into it. So, um, so you really yeah. accelerated that time frame, like you really yes. compressed the time and accelerated your progress, I should say. Yeah, and it was it was I I went through all of the steps, but I kind of had a, a determination of what we were going to do already a little bit. So that was a um, I was like, okay, I'm 
I'm working out, I'm putting on the video, listening in my headphones, you know, I'm yeah. driving to where I have about a 25 minute commute. So I'm like, all right, I put in, put it in on, I listen to every, you know, lesson all the way through and just kind of put it on one and a half speed, you know, kind of yeah. <laughs> the whole yeah. thing, but got through it all. And felt re- I felt really equipped by the time we were putting offers in though, which was just so confidence inspiring for me to know what I was doing, evaluating properties and um, it felt really good. So we, we knew we wanted to go somewhere warm. So there's a couple of places from where we live that are kind of good for that. You can go to Arizona, you know, Scottsdale, yep. Tucson, those types of places. Um, and then Florida, we, we typically have for the past five or six years, taken a winter trip to Florida anyways, January or February, which mm-hmm. isn't even in Florida, isn't the warmest time of year, but it's a lot warmer than five below. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so we were like, okay, we want to be in Florida. And as I just kind of was thinking about where we wanted to be, I really looked at the markets in Florida and the prices, because like I said, we don't have, we didn't have extra cash. I had about $200,000 of equity that I was able to put on this HELOC and, and use to reinvest. So I'm like, okay, that's going to get me, if I need to put 20% down on something that, that's going to give me this, you know, place so that really that narrowed it down for us to gulf coast area in terms of pricing because southern florida was a little bit more expensive mm-hmm. um it still cash flowed really well but wasn't going to fit what we could put a down payment on so right um so we started looking at gulf coast and i was looking between all, everywhere from you know um gulf shores to to panama city beach and ended right. up just uh, i was putting offers in, in gulf shores and offers in in destin and found a, a place in Panama City Beach that really fit what we were looking for. And the, the owner accepted our offer. So yeah, it was awesome. Exciting. How many offers were you making back then? Were you, uh, did, how many properties did you go through? Do you remember how many you, offers you made before you got? This was accepted? actually the second offer that I put okay. in. And uh, the first offer we put in, um, they came back with a, it was on a, it was on a place in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Yeah. And uh, they came back with a couple of little contingencies and I just, just didn't, I just wasn't feeling it. So um, we ended up, we could have taken that one, but the, yeah. the second one, we came in with this one and they wanted a little more money. They wanted a little more, a couple more things, but ultimately, um, we followed what your advice was in terms of some of the, the strategies of co- connecting with them and the letters and all that stuff. And they yeah. really, they, they took our offer. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, so we ended up with the property in Panama city beach, Florida back in, you closed in almost just a, almost exactly about a year ago now. Right. Yeah, it was April 11th, so just a couple of weeks from now. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So so just over a year. So tell us, take us through kind of the rough numbers of what that what, you know, what you were kind of projecting, how that first year turned out. I'm always mm-hmm. I always think it's interesting when we look back after that first year specifically on after we've launched it, what our numbers mm-hmm. looked like for projections, how it's going now. Like tell us a little bit yeah. roughly how the performance has been. Yeah, you know, so we um so we closed on it in April. I had some some little uh, changes we had made with contractors, painting, tile, a couple couple little things, nothing big. It was it was actually in pretty good shape. Um and we went out there the first part of May and set it up. So we were there for a week, put all the got everything dialed in and set up and then um we launched it over Memorial Day weekend. So Okay. And we were booked pretty much 90% plus all from Memorial Day weekend all the way through um, like mid August. So, so that was, you know, summertime, which nice is the busy launch. season yeah. there, Yeah, but it was season, good. Launched it right at, right at the beginning of the peak season, which is always nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we got, we, we had good bookings all the way through there. Um, great. I mean, the, 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 the program of customer service and stuff that we've learned through the Odyssey program. I mean, people just, love it love what we love the way we've set it up love the way we interact with them love like we just started doing little i mean this actually kind of happened by accident rather than leaving a a welcome gift in the place um i had somebody come that was their birthday weekend and i was like oh what can i do for their birthday i don't live anywhere near there so i was like i'll get on doordash and i had a a box of cookies delivered to their house for their birthday on on the the second day they were there and they're they just were over the moon excited about that so i actually made that like a staple of what we do with every guest. Every guest, we don't leave a, a welcome gift. The second day, they get a box delivered on the, the doorstep from DoorDash that has just cr- like that's awesome. variety what of cookies in it. Yeah, yeah, and people love it. They're just like, I mean, every every person's like, this is over the top, so good. And yeah. um, so so really, we did really well all through the summer and um, had 
fall kind of tapered off a little bit, but it's just, that was expected. It's kind of, mm -hmm. once That's you get into year. November there, it's, it's pretty slow. Um, but we did really well. We did. I mean, we almost met my annual projection in the, the, you know, half a year, basically half a year. So yeah, yeah we, I mean, it was seven months that we had it listed. So yeah. that was really exciting for me to see that. Um, and the, the projections are for me were a little bit hard because it's like how many cleaning fees do you figure into that? Cause that comes in as part of your total revenue sure. and all that. But, yeah. um, but really we almost met our full annual projection in that seven month period. So, um, awesome. so this year we're, we're looking at probably at bringing actual income in on the property, which would be great. That was, it was a little bit of a, probably just over break even for us in the past year, which was perfect because we got personal use out of it. We also uh, have been able to enter into a couple of home exchange programs where we actually let people stay there for a week and then we get points and then we go and use those at other places. So I've already awesome. used two so, or three so weeks of that. So truly leveraging the lifestyle asset into even other destinations, which is yeah, an yeah. awesome strategy. Yeah. Yeah. I did a ski week at Crested Butte in, in January where yeah. like, Crested Butte's not far from me, but it would have been five grand for the week and I got it for nothing, you know? That's <laughs> so, awesome. Good for you. So it's yeah. been a, it's been a really, really good uh, investment for us. And I think this year it'll be, it'll be profitable and, and great. So awesome. Awesome. Well, let's, Go back into, because I always tell people, you know, there's there's two major stages that take, it seems like the majority of the time, unless you're managing mm -hmm. yourself, which you guys are, we're going to get into that, is that acquisition phase. And then, which yeah. we talked a little bit about that. We you, you went through that pretty quickly. I mean, that was a pretty quick, you didn't have to make a ton of offers. Yeah. You weren't losing out on a lot. You were able to get in before interest rates really went up because really mm -hmm. right after you guys bought those, I, I bought one in June. And while I was looking, I swear that it goes that April to June timeframe, I was looking and making offers. And I swear every time I blinked the interest rates were going up during it. And I ended up, yep. by the time I closed totally. the end of June, it was like a 7% interest rate. And so it had skyrocketed. Yeah. So you guys got in, which was great. Talk to us a little bit about the setup. You said there wasn't a ton that you had to do, but that setup phase is always, I always tell people it usually takes you longer and is a little more expensive than you think it's going to be when you're setting these oh, yeah. properties up, especially if you're going to set them up to operate toward the top of the market. So let's, I always like to share the kind of the pros and the cons of this yeah. journey and uh, love you to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the setup phase was, so I have a graphic design background. I don't have an interior design background, yeah. but I do have a graphic design background. So I actually really enjoyed that part of it. Um, I, I just, I, I probably dug into it a little too much, <laughs> but I spent a lot of time on it, but it, I probably could have spent less time on it, but we went through and did the, uh, the consultation, um, for, um, oh with our gosh, designer, Mike through. Whitfield. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. Mike. Uh, and, and that was really great. It, it, we didn't take every recommendation he gave, but it set us in a direction yep. that then we were able to go and they, we really dialed it in. And, um, so that was honestly though, there was some challenges with that because we're remote, you know, yes. we're, I'm having to get, I, I paid a, uh, a setup crew to come in and actually do the initial install. And we were going to come in and bring the final finishing touches, but uh, the, the ordering of all of the products and all of that stuff and then trying to manage that was challenging for sure. I, I, I wanted to avoid using the warehousing type service. Yeah. Um, so I basically Amazon and I did Amazon and Wayfair for most of our stuff, got it delivered to the house. And I had to have our cleaner go and open the garage and push it into the garage. Right so it didn't there. grow legs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so we had, we had, you know, that was a ton of ordering and a ton of stuff getting in there, getting it put in. And then we had that crew come in and really do the majority of the setup. Um, there were challenges that I didn't expect though, like furniture, missing pieces, um, some pieces not working well, some things not actually fitting like we thought they would. And so we had to kind of pivot and reorder. Um, but it was, it was a fun process too. It was, it was a lot of work. And when we got there, we were expecting to have like a week of like a little fi fix this, do that little thing. Cause we paid somebody to set it up, but there was a lot, there was a lot, we ended up working a lot that week, but it was still really fun. So yeah, good. And, and yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I always tell people that that setup phase organization is key. You have got to be so organized because even 
when it's really organized and the best laid plans, there's always those things that happen. And, and we're, yeah. like you said, just having, you know, some of the pieces that are broken when they got delivered or they're missing a, they're missing a setup piece and you have, okay, I can't do that now. I've got to send that back. And, and so even the best laid plans have hiccups during that setup phase, it feels like, yeah. so, but it's, it's always really fun and rewarding to see it come together at the end. Right. It, it's, yeah. Sometimes we're, like, we're we're frustrated in the middle of it. It's taking us a little more time, but it is really rewarding when you see that first one come in. And then obviously that listing gets put together. The photos come together, it goes live and you start to see that very first booking coming in. And that's, uh, you know, that's always that, that big sigh of relief and that excitement all together at the same time, which is, which is yeah. really, really fun to have. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And we, the, as far as like you talked about more time and more money for the setup phase, it, it was for sure. There was a lot of time, a lot of sweat equity. Um, and then as far as the funds go, you know, we kind of prepared for budgeting about 10% of the purchase price. And we ended up probably more like 15% of the purchase price because mm -hmm. we wanted to just make sure it was done right, you know, top, yeah. um, but it wasn't, it wasn't too far out of line. That, that kind of 10% number wasn't too far out of line from what we were looking at. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And, and so when we go and, and you've got it set up and I'd like to spend a little bit of maybe just a titch more time because I yeah. know you're listening and those of you who are listening, we always, we always post the listing link so you guys can check out Nate and Jen's property in the show notes, go check it out on Airbnb, but you'll notice that they've got, I think last time I looked, you had 28 or 29, all five-star reviews straight across mm -hmm. the board. And so I mean that we talk so much about the experience that we can deliver to these guests and and how that happens. You mentioned about the DoorDash. Are there any other little kind of Easter yeah. egg nuggets out yeah. there that you there guys are doing for the guests that you can you can um, kind of share with the audience? I know you're managing it yourself, so you're very involved with that guest, you know, and you're managing it yourself from pretty dang far away. I mean, you're you're in Colorado. This property is in the Panhandle of Florida, so it's uh, yeah. What are some of those other things that you're yeah <laughs> yeah helping you really do a great job on that? Yeah, you know, I think a, a lot of the the setup phase that we did was key. People love the way that the property is set up. And we've got, it, it's, I mean, it's not, the house itself is not that special or unique. It's a, it's a four minute drive to the beach, which is great, but it's not on the beach. Yep. Um, but, but it has this nice little backyard patio and a lower deck in the backyard. And we really just maximize that outdoor space to make it like their own private sanctuary because Panama city beach is a fun beach environment, but it's high energy. It's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of known for being like the spring break vibe. It's kind of yeah. like, you know, it, it's, it's a busy active town. It's great for families. Cause there's tons, there's many golfs on every corner, all this stuff, but you come back to the house and it's really in the backyard. It's just like this private kind of sanctuary. We've got a fire pit back there, some yeah. just comfortable lawn furniture. We've got a, like a little miniature golf, course thing that we set up back there and um a great deck that you, you can has outdoor eating covered outdoor eating area and some kind of those the egg chair things out there it, it people rave about the outdoor space that we set right. up um so that was what because there was a few there's actually a few properties for sale in this neighborhood that we're in and we looked at a few of them and this one when i saw the the photo even the listing photos for it on you know zillow i was like that's that's it right there you know that that's a differentiator versus some of the other competition. So people really love that. I think um, Mike really helped us set a vision for the interior that that was great in that we, it's, we've got a surf theme and we call it the white cap surf shack. That's the name of our, um, the white cap is the street that we're on. So it's got surfboards lining the walls. It's got uh, just kind of beachy decor, which everybody does near the beach, but we kind of went a little over the top with it just to be fun. And uh, we really made it a family destination. So in, there's a bunk room. In the bunk room, we've got a Pac-Man arcade game and a Nintendo Wii. Uh, in the main room, we've got a classic Nintendo entertainment system with the TV. And then also uh, an infinity table, which um, as you get into the program, you probably learned about those, but it's got you know a bunch of board games on it and stuff, which is yeah. great. And just kind of dialed it in for families. That's really our target market is families and, and groups. So um, so that really has done a lot with that. And then I think the the personal touch, um, I think if I were to not be self-managing it, I would really want to make sure that I have somebody who is actually regularly and consistently kept connecting with the people, not yeah. just kind of like set it and forget it. So yes. um, that, that that's one of the the most consistent compliments we get is just that personal touch of, of interaction with them. 
Um, now I don't want to personally manage more than one and we plan to grow our portfolio. So I'll, I'll manage one at a time and then find a good property manager for that. And then kind of go on to the next one and self-manage that one yeah. until it really gets running like this one. So, nice. but I think that, that really finding somebody that's, that's got a, a really strong personal touch and, and is really attentive to the guests. And I think even like to the extent of, I mean, we had a guest break our glass shower door, um, in the thing and they were super apologetic. And I was like, and I try to charge them for this. I was like, no, it's whatever, you know, right. <laughs> like, right. I mean, if I can buy a five-star review, then I'm going to buy a five-star review. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. just, especially so. when somebody's like, yeah, apologetic, it's an accident. Mm -hmm. They let you know what happens. I mean, yeah. it's, you're exactly right. There's uh there's times you make those calls and you say, Hey, listen, we're going to cover it. And you, you've got a raving fan and a repeat customer down the line. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and the personal touch is critical. And I always talk about, you know, I'm a big proponent that I don't, that I don't suggest many people manage their own properties. And it's not because of any other reason other than the time I know it takes, like you just mentioned, you yeah. know, you're, you're doing a great job with it, but you're saying, I don't want to manage more than one. And that's just right. because of the time. Right. And yeah. in order to do it correctly. And one of the biggest things that you can have in a management partner is that they really help you deliver this great experience that you put together. Like you said, a lot of the, a lot of the way you set up the property. And like we talk about it in our group a lot, that does a lot of the heavy lifting for us for that experience. But also mm -hmm. that experience, part of that experience is the personal touch communication, that person that they feel like, hey, there's somebody there that cares about if I have a great experience and a great mm -hmm. stay here. And it's important that just comes down to communication, right? And it's and it's yeah. not always just the automated, you know, I, I put my automated communication in my channel management system and let somebody automated, you know, chat for me. That's not yeah. what we want to do, right? You're, you, right? you can make it more personal. All of a sudden, the guest feels that that experience is raised, the bar is raised, and all of a sudden, you've got these raving fans, and you guys have seen that with your property. But that's a job with a property management partner as well, is to say, listen, yeah. I want the right partner to help me maximize this asset, and maximizing the asset is maximizing the guest experience. And Absolutely, so, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. And I've got kind of our so so we're not at the at the point yet of of pulling the trigger on another one. Part of that is just getting getting our 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 down payment figured out for how we're going to do that but i want to move on to another one soon and but when i do I already have our property manager picked out for the place in florida so it's because nice. I, I did a bunch of interviews already and kind of checking with people because i think it is so important and one of the things that i've looked for is how quickly do you respond to an inquiry or a request to book or a, a guest problem and right. is that 12 hours a day or 24 hours a day or what does that look like you know so yeah um th that guest experience is critical to keep those those positive reviews coming back. So absolutely. And it's one of the, just a, a trick that, and a tip that we could share with listeners. If you're really considering property managers, go look at the properties they manage and read the reviews. And because mm -hmm. people consistently comment about really great communication, it'll be one of the, right. like the number one comments and, and compliments you get. If you have great communication and a really yeah. good property manager, you're going to see in almost all the reviews Hey, so and so was amazing. They were they were always available. Their communication was great, and they mentioned them in the reviews specifically. Yeah. I've got properties that they mentioned our property managers by name in in eighty percent of the reviews. That's what you're looking for. Just as a tip, mm -hmm. if you are transitioning, you interview them, you talk to them, and sometimes you want when you want to do a little due diligence on it, go look at their listings and just read the reviews on the listings to see how well yeah. they communicate. It's one of the key things that a really great property manager will do. Yeah, and you know, I think even like. We've had, we have had some guests who have had stuff go wrong and the communication still, still earns you a five-star review. Absolutely. When That's things a, go wrong. Exactly. There's problems that will happen, right? Something might break, something might not be working, something goes out, runs out, something happens. And when you communicate and, and let them know, oh my gosh, we're so sorry, I'm going to fix this problem. It's crazy. You'll still get those five-star reviews. Not, and even when there was a problem at the property. Yeah, absolutely. We had, I mean, for what, on, for example, we had a, uh, one day the one of the bathtubs clogged up or something like that the drain got clogged and then the person couldn't figure out the stop it was just like a a, a big mess and so I, I, the way that we have our team set up is our cleaning person her she her husband is like our handyman so i called him he went over there took care of it cleaned it out and you know had it fixed within a couple hours and the guest was super happy and you know it, right. just things like that they go wrong and i think the customer service is is key one yeah. of them we had a we had a guest stay over Christmas, and um, she 
she uh, like when she was there she's like hey do you have a mixer here i can't seem to find it in here we were hoping to make some cookies and I'm like that was the one thing we didn't have you know <laughs> we yeah. had everything else yeah i'm like okay so i went on and doordash and ordered one and have it delivered there in, in an hour you know what i mean and she was yeah. just raving about that but i think that you want somebody that's going to do those types of things that yes. you would do for your guests you know yeah so that's awesome great great tips great advice to share through that so so let's talk a little bit about, so we've got this property. Let's talk about the future. Like you said, you want to do some, you know, another property. Are you looking in the same area? A lot of, a lot of questions I get a lot are, should I stay in the same area that I've had success that I know now, or do I want to expand into different areas? Or are, are you, you know, have you been asking you guys to having those conversations? Are you thinking about where you want to go next? Um, I have thought about that. Um, I think it would still, for us, the, the lifestyle part of it is pretty big. So I think we, we probably want to, find something somewhere we'd want to go. If I was just looking purely investment, I saw the property right next door to ours come up for sale last week. I'm like, oh man, that'd be great. I'd, I mean, I could totally, I could actually take that and even self-manage that because it's right next door. I mean, it'd be the same right. cleaner, the same thing. It'd be super easy. Um, but I think from, from a preference standpoint, I think we might actually look something more like Southwestern US, you know, uh, Arizona. I mean, again, we're, we're in the mountains, Colorado. We want to go somewhere where it's warm in the wintertime. Yeah. <laughs> in the yep. summertime, we want to be here. We don't want to go anywhere else in the summertime. Exactly. We want to be right where we're at. But in the wintertime, I ski a lot. I ski a couple of days a week, but you still, you get to the point where you're like, I just need to get out, you know, we're done with the snow. Sensing, yeah. So. I live in the ski resort areas in Utah and uh, that's yeah. exactly how we are. We're, I, I wouldn't trade it ever for the summertime. I actually live right in right. the base of Snow Basin Ski Resort. I don't ski much. Okay. And they're having yeah. like an epic ski year this year. They're getting more yeah. snow than they've ever had in the history, and which is awesome. But it's, I'm not much of a skier, but I love the mountains in the summertime. And so I wouldn't, wouldn't trade them yeah. for anything in the summer, but we're always looking for that warm weather in the winter as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we'd, we'd probably be looking, you know, we've looked uh, in Arizona, we've looked kind of in that area. I, I haven't gotten to the serious point of really picking a market yet, but, yeah. um, but started to look that way. I, it, it is tempting to just stay in our same location because, you know, it's, but, but I, part of me wants to diversify too, because we are in a spot that gets hurricanes. If something comes through and it knocks out two of our properties yeah. at once, that's going to be hard to swallow. You know what I mean? So right. I'd rather maybe diversify a little bit. So. And, and it's a major, I mean, that's a major uh, vacation destination, you know, talk about that. A lot of times people think, oh man, it's really hard to stand out in those crowded markets. I mean, you want to talk mm -hmm. about a crowded market, you can talk about Panama City Beach, Florida, right? Yeah. And so there's plenty of competition down there and you're able to stand out because of these things we're talking about. But I'd love to hear your perspective on that as well. And, and just your firsthand experience of being able to do that. Yeah. You know, I think being in a vacation market for me makes it so that I feel confident and, and, and being so far away. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm not saying that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't look into some of these smaller markets that, that might be unique and have really big upside to potential earnings. But um, for me, there, there are, if my cleaning crew goes down, there's another cleaning crew right around the corner that I can call. You right. know what I mean? There, there, and so, but it there is stiffer competition, a hundred percent. But when you go and you look through the competition, a lot of them are not really, they're not doing great. You know what I mean? And I'm, I don't mean financially; they're still doing okay financially, but they're not they're not really differentiating themselves. And uh, the the one thing that that everybody wants when they go to 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 Panama City Beach is beachfront, and we don't have beachfront, so. Right. So that's kind of been where it's like, okay, we're going to, we're going to make this unique in that it appeals to those people who are like, I can, I can walk 10 minutes to the beach or I can, you know, drive four minutes to the beach and have it not be a big deal because I've got these other things that are in place. Yes. Um, and there's, there's literally thousands of properties in that market. Um, and most of them are beachfront and their condos overlooking the ocean, which is great and beautiful, but but I think we kind of have a, a unique niche in that we're the, those kind of families that are like, hey, we've got we've got two, three generations of family that are going to come and stay in this place, and we're not really looking to be crowded in a condo. <laughs> you yeah. know, we're not we're not a big five bedroom house either. We're not for big groups, but um, but I think the, the 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 principles that we learned in the Vodacy program really helped us set apart in in a lot of the, in a lot of those ways. I look at even at the place that's for sale next to me. It was it was a short term rental. Um, and, and he's, it's nice inside. If you look at the pictures, it's nice, but, um, his reviews are mixed. He's been up for the same, he, but he started in April last year. Um, and his reviews are mixed and his, his 
experience isn't a differentiator. So, and that's the very next door house to us. You know, it's, it's, yes. there's not much that's different there. Um, and he's selling, I don't know why he's selling. I haven't talked to him. I, I, I've communicated with the guy before, but, um, but I would imagine he's just not, he's not doing as well as he would like to do. As much money as he thought. Yeah. 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 It, it's interesting. You hit on a couple of things and I love that this conversation is going this direction because it's, it's a question that so many people have in their minds. And at the very beginning, you said, you know, this big market gives you some confidence that, you know, one, there's, there's resources with cleaners and, you know, whether it's management company cleaners, those resources for, to help you operate your vacation rental, but also is those major markets, the demand is there. And what I've always said, you know, I would, I feel like it's much easier to stand out in a crowded market where there's already demand than go create demand where there's none. And, right. and, and I've, and I've used the example of, if we, if I have, you and I have the exact same home on the same street in the same area and everything's pretty equal in va with vacation rentals, one of the things I love about them is that I could make double the amount of money my neighbor makes. I mean, there's going to be yeah. a big discrepancy in the amount of income mm -hmm. that we can make. And you're seeing it firsthand, you know, you've right. got mixed reviews, probably not the performance that, that you're having and everything else is equal, same market same yeah. house, same, same street, everything else is pretty dang equal. And so I always tell people one thing I love about short term rentals is it's not as market dependent as you think it is, you're not right. just riding the market, right. And yeah. we have that potential to raise the bar, we have the potential to go create these unique experiences and stand out and get our unfair share of business. That's what I've, I've been saying for a long time is that's what our ultimate goal is. Because the amount of money for the top of the market is a lot different than the middle and the bottom of the market. And yeah. like you mentioned, it's less crowded at the top. It, it's like yeah. when you look at all the listings, you're saying it's, you know, they're not, it, it's not that hard to stand out. And a lot of people yeah. have the impression that it actually is a lot harder to stand out. And I've, I've always like, I'm, I love that this conversation is going there because you're experiencing this firsthand. Yeah. And I, I think just my neighbor is, is the key. Like, I mean, it just, it, it, we both started at the same time. And I think that he just, he just didn't have the right things in place. And maybe, maybe, I don't know if he's self-managing or he had a management company or what, but um, I think my goal, so we're not, we're not going to be like with the house that we're in because of the price point and the number of rooms and stuff, we're not going to be in the 90% on our, right. of the, mar of the, the market beach, as right? a whole. Yeah. 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 We're not on the beach. We're not going to be, we're not going to be the, the house on stilts on the beach that sleeps yeah. 20 people, you know, <laughs> but right. um but my goal is to be at the top of the market that we are in, yes. which is ju just off the beach, host two to three families and, you know, kind of like, and, and I, I think we're getting there, which is awesome. It's, it's, you know, I'm actually, we're, we're getting booked up for the summer and I'm starting to think I need to raise my rates again because it's, we're starting to fill in and I'm looking at, I, I use price labs for pricing and I'm, yeah. I'm like, you know, the little, if you're in price labs at all, you see, it's like you're blue or you're green or whatever. And, and we're yeah. in the blue right now because we're way more booked than the competition. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I need to raise my rates a little bit because we're a little bit too booked. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, yeah. and it is, it's, it's that um, there's sometimes when you're, you know, you're in a high occupancy market for the summertime, but it's always, you don't, you don't want to be hundred percent occupied too soon. Right. And so it is, right. a, it is a chance. It's that, that balancing act of raising the prices and keeping the occupancy at a level that, that makes sense for the, for the time of the year that you're going into. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. So this is, this is really, you know, we, we kind of went through that, um, you know, I love the, the the last part of that conversation where we really were diving into kind of some of the differences of what we dive into, you know, what you're looking at. And I, I love where you said, you know, I'm not expecting to be make the same revenue that the houses on the beach are making and bringing in and sleep 20 people, but I want to be the top of the area that I'm in. And, and it's important for people to understand, well, we underwrite all this stuff. We are looking at that. We're sectioning off different sections of the market. It's not just looking at everything. We look at everything as a whole, and then we start to section off and say, okay, where is the actual potential revenue here? And how yeah. can I go get my unfair share? And so it's really, it's awesome to see you guys doing that. It's awesome to see you now rolling into, because it always takes, I always say, you, you know, your first 12 to 18 months, a lot of times that is just a bit better than break even. And then you start mm -hmm. to see that revenue go up. I'm excited for you guys now that you're kind of through that launch and setup phase that first year, now all of a sudden really start to hit your stride and start to raise those prices, keep that occupancy where you want it, make those adjustments. You'll start to see those repeat guests starting to call you back and, and because of the customer service you've done, 
it usually takes about that amount of time, 12 to 18 months before that, that repeat guest list probably starts to snowball because you probably had not quite, you probably haven't had that many repeat guests the first year. It's not typical to have a lot the first year, but now you start moving into and people start coming back. And so really yeah. excited for you to, to light, you know, roll into that year number two. I always ask people, you know, we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and some of the, you know, some of the, like we said, more time, maybe a little bit more money than you you planned on. But overall, you guys dove into it, had a really well laid out plan. You followed the process. But even then, a well laid out plan has some challenges. And I always the I always want to know from people, was it worth it? Would you do it again? It, you know, when you when you mm -hmm. look back at year one and you said, hey, if I had to repeat that and go through it again, was it all worth it? Yeah. Um, a hundred percent. I think I was just talking with my wife about this last night, actually, because, um, even though from a, from a purely dollars in dollars out standpoint, when we went from June to December, we might've just, just better than broke even. It wasn't actually a break even. And this year it'll be much better than that. Cause we've got the rest of the year to kind of go through it. But, um, the, the tax benefit that we're getting because we were materially participating yeah. and we were able to fully write that off against my other income is huge. So I mean, that's, that's huge. That's income in my pocket. Plus the, here's what I'll say is we're going, my, we're going to, my, my parents are having, my mom's turning 65, my stepdad's turning 70 and um, they're having, they want us all to go with them to Hawaii in August. And so we, through using Southwest cards for points for purchases on the property. I paid for my whole family's plane tickets to Hawaii with points. I used the home exchange app to book us a, a, a house in Hawaii for the, for a week while we're there for free. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, like, I mean, that's, that's a, that's an eight to $10,000 vacation right there. That's just like nothing. So, I mean, the, even the, the from a financial standpoint, we've, significantly benefited in the first year. And I think the actual dollar benefit, we're already seeing it this year. It's, it's already booking in the positive from last year. So I would 100% do it again. There's definitely challenges. Um, and it's like, it's home ownership, you know, like I just, for example, when we were there, we were there, um, last month, I, I noticed that there were some termites in the, in a log out in the yard. I'm like, Oh man, I gotta make sure these things don't get in the house. So I had to call, you know, the exterminator and come, get termite treatment, even though it wasn't in the house yet, but we've had, um, <laughs> yeah, make sure it doesn't. Yeah. We've had carpenter bees getting into our wood on our porch and like going out there and plugging up all the holes and, you know, just all the homeowner stuff that happens. I mean, it's, just, it's the same thing as owning a house, right? You, right? you have stuff that comes up. So there's those things and there's, there's diff difficulties with guests and coordinating things, but, um, but I'd 100% do it again. And I think, I mean, we're planning on doing it again. A second awesome. time now. I, so, I love to hear yeah. that. And I always love, I always want people walking into this game with their eyes wide open. Short-term rentals have been the hot topic of investments for a little while. The last few years, having them has been like having toilet paper during COVID. It seemed like it didn't matter what you did, you <laughs> made money, right? And so yeah. that's not the real game that we play though. And it is, yeah. it is really a, there is real strategy and plans and processes that we follow to operate at the top, raise the bar in the industry as a whole develop these amazing guest experiences and have people so excited to come back. That's what it's about. And then I always get the, that answer. And I I've yet to have an answer that says, no, it's not worth it. Maybe one day we will, but it's um, yeah, I get the unequivocal. Yes, we do it again. So I'm so glad to hear that. And so it's awesome, Nate. I always appreciate anybody coming on, especially our members here at Odyssey and sharing their story into short-term rentals. It's been awesome to hear your story. And so first, I want to really thank you for doing that and sharing that with our audience, with me. I love these conversations. And then I always like to ask that one last question as we roll into the end of the episode and run out of time here is, if you could rewind the clock and go back in time and give yourself some advice you know, in your earlier, in your earlier days, five, 10 years ago, and knowing what you know now, or even a year ago, when knowing what you know now, what would you go back and tell your, your younger self uh, as advice after learning this process? Yeah, I think I would. Um, oh, I think I would say do it sooner, probably is what I would say. I mean, I, I think I was kind of waiting for all the all the things to be right. And 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 I, I mean, I didn't wait when we got to that point. I was like, Oh, they're gonna raise rates, I need to jump on this now. But um, but I had been toying around with these types of ideas for a couple of years. So I think just jumping into it sooner, it's, um, would have, would for sure be what I would say. Um, I'd also say, I think that, um, 
it's specifically regarding like what you guys offer in the Bodicey program um, that you can have, like it really gave me great confidence knowing what feeling like I knew what I was doing getting into it. And I'd say you can really have really great confidence going into this if you know these basic principles. I mean, it's basic customer service, basic yeah. like just, like you you hear it and you're like, yeah, that yeah, makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But um, I think those things are uh, indispensable. And really, for me, I I I think that it, like I I, I kind of went into it and I wasn't scared of it as much, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. as I might have been before. It's a pretty scary thing. Like, oh, I'm going to put a bunch of money into this thing and hopefully it generates a return. And um, I, for me, it's I, I'd say it's not scary. I think is what I would say. So love it, love it. I appreciate I got- you sharing that. Number one answer we get on every conversation I have is start sooner. And so that, uh, and, and then obviously that a, a close second is just what you said is having a process to follow, having somebody that's been there, maybe, you know, a, a few steps ahead of you to give you that confidence to say, yeah, it's going to be okay because you're never going to have all the answers, right? Uh, you know, one of the things that I love, uh, a guy that I listen to all the time, Ed Milet, he talks about, and he says, one of the biggest differences between really successful people and people who don't take a lot of action or are not as successful is the amount of information that a successful needs to move forward is actually less than the amount of information somebody else that never moves forward is. They get caught in that analysis paralysis, think they have to have every mm-hmm. answer. And so, right. you know, have a pe- plan, have a process, have somebody that has been down the road before. So you're not having to, you know, that ignorance tax is expensive. And so sometimes yes. it's just easier not to have to pay that. But yep. overall, just get started, get started sooner. You can do it. It's not rocket science, right? We tell you, we, right. we say that all the time. It's Right now, you, you you just haven't done it, so it's scary, and you second guess yourself. But the you know most of this is very logic based, and uh, and and if you if you have somebody that you can follow, obviously, why we do these episodes, why we ask people like you to share your story, it's uh, so that other people have the confidence to move forward if they feel like this is the right asset for them. So, Nate, I really really appreciate your time. We're gonna wrap it up today. Thank you so much for joining us. Those of you that are listening, we know how valuable your time is. We know how how much it it means to us that you share it with us and spend it with us. For those of you that want to go check out Nate and Jen's property in Panama City Beach, if you've got a beach vacation coming up, we will put the link in the show notes. You can go check out the, it's the, the white, is it the white surf or the white, what is it? Uh, White cap, white cap, white cap, surf surf shack, right? Yeah. White cap. So the link will be in there. Go check it out. It's a beautiful property. Go read some of their reviews. Go look at what they're doing. Success always leaves clues. So even if you're not going to visit, go check it out. Give them some love on Airbnb. And I'm sure that they would love to host you if you are in the area. So Nate, thanks again for joining us. Those of you that are with us, I always ask and challenge you to do one thing at the end of every episode. And that is to go pick one thing that you can do today to start building that life that you don't want to take a vacation from. Cheers, my friends. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. Share this with other people you think need to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey, Grace, is there a website? Yes! For more amazing content and expert advice, visit bodicy.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.